searching for bait and looking for fish. Just launched, just came down a river, doing about 22 miles an hour. Got the motor trimmed all the way down, going really slow, just staying on looking at the fish finder looking for bait right now. A little bit of bunker. There's a little bit of bait here. Everyone asks, all right, how do you uh, find your fish? It's a whole lot of boring. It's a whole lot of looking, you know? We're just looking for the right thing. We want to find some good bait. We can find some good schools of bait that we can cast and jig around. Uh, you know, we can catch fish on it all day in a lot of cases. We need to find those schools of bait. They weren't tight, I didn't want Need a bunch of small, scoot little uh, individual groups of bait like this, which is fine, it's good, it's life. But it's rained a whole lot here, and uh, coming out of the river, it rained a whole lot last week or the week before that. And it pushes all that fresh water down the river. And it kills the salinity, it makes everything so fresh that it doesn't always push the stripers out, but it almost always pushes the bait out. They like that salinity. So, uh, it hasn't rained in a few days, so we're hoping it's bait will start coming back further. Good. There's fish sitting on them. There's fish sitting right inside them rocks, man. There's fish sitting right in those rocks. by that rock pile. This rock pile right here. Five good ones. Five or six good ones. <laughs> he pulled one off of the rock pile. <clears throat> this was a very small isolated group dude that we found right? Just bouncing it off the bottom. Control going down. You know just the same song and dance that we've been doing you know the past couple seasons. Doesn't feel like anything crazy but you know we're pretty close, man. We're yeah. pretty. There you go. Good. Okay, take this camera. See me, Mike. This was a real isolated group of fish that we found. We didn't see any good bait that we normally would look for. All right. We just saw a rock pile with some fish around it, and we stopped. And that's it. I didn't see any bait. Usually, we look for good groups of bait first. But uh, we found a rock pile and no bait. A couple it's fish on it. And you put Mike, you put Big Mike over a uh, over a group of fish with one of these spoons, and he's gonna catch it. Okay. Cool. Beautiful. There it is. Good job, bro. Thanks, sir. Oh, she got my hand. Let go, of my finger. How's that screen looking, Pop? Good job, Mike. Way to break the ice. It looks like a desert now. <laughs> I'm telling you, there was nothing. It was just one isolated little group. Hey, let me get this right. Alright guys, it's the uh, first trip of spring up here in the northeast and we're looking around looking. We want to find a lot of bait, big bait schools together to fish around and we haven't seen that. We've seen scattered bait. We saw a rock pile with uh, some good striper marks on it. We stopped and jigged on it, caught a few uh, fish like 24, 26 inches. But that was it. That was, there was only a few fish on that spot. Came in here to the harbor just to see if we could uh, find some bait to net Didn't see any bait, but we're seeing lots of scattered stripers. You see all these little white dots Those are all striped bass So in you know, we already looked for a couple hours for bait. It's the first trip of the year water still uh, on the cold side So we casted some small stuff Mike is still working that eight inch spoon. Tommy's throwing some small stuff. I'm throwing some small stuff Look at all those Coming up to the top. Yeah, see that? Oh my god. Yeah, I see it out the window all the time. Alright, there's already fish there, guys. 
Spoon on the left side. Spoon on port. Casting. Do whatever you want. Lots of fish. Scattered out. Hot dog. They are thick. They're stacked. They're stacked. Oh, nice. I was just about to say. They're stacked. Stacked. Hit right the boat. You got a little cutie. Yeah. Mm. So that's what a stack of fish looks like right there. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Look at that. Woo! Wow! Look at all them chickens. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that squirrel. <laughs> look at that mess. Wow. There's a good one. Wow. Dude, I barely lifted her off the bottom. That's the key. Gotta let that thing sit on the bottom. Ah! Oh, he felt decent too, man. Dang! He felt decent. Dude, I let it sit on, I let it sit on the bottom. Barely moved it. There's a fish on it. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. there oh yeah dude crawl it dude tommy crawl it? i was crawling it man just like i could picture me just kicking up dust just hammered it like a largemouth bass would hammer it <laughs> two times in a row crawled it and it just thump, 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 thump. just hammer just like largemouth bass fishing man just like crawling a worm you know These little five pounders, four pounders. <laughs> this one's probably three. What's nastier than a three pound striper? Don't say a four pound striper. Just to, just to give you an idea how slow I was working it. Look, Tommy, you can't even see that bait. Wow. That's how slow I was. Interesting. So you can see all this here, guys. You see all this, all the scattered bait. In the bottom and side scan are all stacked up on the bottom. Tommy caught a few casts in this uh, little bait, this little hookup bait. I couldn't get dialed in on it, so I started crawling it, just like largemouth bass fishing. And had two real right in a row. You can see how deep that bait got because I was crawling it really, really slow. It just just tap, 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 tap it like a largemouth bass would. Man, he really got it down there. I don't have room to get my finger in there. Jeez, man. Got it. Barely crawl it. 
Chance. Oh, he tapped it. There he is. Three for three, Tommy. Crawling it. Put that small one on, bro. Crawling that small one. It's the same color as that, just small. I'm just small one. The old jigging pig. You got a little fast in here. The old jig and pig. This is that little casking reel. I want to see how long this casking reel will last. We'll see how long it lasts when I do that. Well, I just want to see how long it'll last. You know what I mean? It's a decent reel. There's a lot of decent reels in the $50, $50 range. What sets them apart is how long they stay together. You know what I mean? You have three different sizes here. Which one are you So I'm trying to speed it up. Let's see. I want to know if I can recommend it or not. So. Yeah, it's that same size head, I think. Yeah, they are. <laughs> We're going to speed up the uh, testing of this guy. A little salt water, quick dip. How else am I going to know whether we can recommend it or not, right? Can't wait two years to see if it corrodes. What, the real? Yeah. How much was it? 50 bucks, 59 bucks. They sent me four different reels, but they're all affordable. You know what I mean? They're all like, their most expensive one's like 180, which is where a lot of reels start. So I told them, I said, well, I'm not interested in the $180 reel. There's a lot of those. Just let me see the cheap one and see if it'll... That'll perform. Yeah, see if it'll stay together. They all cast good, you know, out of the box. All their drags and all cheap reels are pretty, eh. But if they stay together after salt, beating them up for years, that's the difference. All right, let me move us back up, guys. He's on that time. He's on that time. I was paying attention to that one. All right, well, you know, hey, you got to catch him where you can find him, right? We're, we can't find bait anywhere today, man. Look at that little cutie. I told you they were little ones. So we marked a bunch of little fish and figured we just cast on them. That's why I couldn't catch any of them. Adorable. Adorable. Turn it to get it out. Look at that. <laughs> Good sign. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Be healthy. Thank you. Good job, bro. <laughs> All right, we're we're pretty much off. And let's go drift up again. Oh wait, no, we're coming back. Let me see. Yeah, let's drift one more time. You see all the shadows here in side scan? These are the stripers, these are all small, and those are the shadows. When the return is that far from the shadow, it means the fish is high up in the water column. In this case, they're all the way through the water column, but I like that when you see them up here. It means they're looking, they're feeding, they're eating probably. Nail, huh? Okay, let's see how long it takes. Bob. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, oh. Nice. What did you <laughs> I didn't get to move it. Still on? Look at Mike in the harbor. In the harbor, baby. Are you casting or jigging? Jigging. I wouldn't even watch it. Jigging your spoon? Jigging the spoon. <laughs> jigging the spoon. You got an audience. Nice, Mike. On the prototype team, old school. <laughs> what do we got here? 
Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. Yep. That's about the size. Only so, get better. This and up. This is a small size of side of what you're gonna see. Still wet for it though, man. Oh yeah. This goes to show you, you know, the appetite of these fish. You can see that was a prototype where I put tape on the <laughs> That's the prototype. That's it. He still likes it. They're everywhere. They're still down there. Is it prototype? Prototype. It is. It's a new name, prototype. Wow, look at him, dude. Striped bass. <laughs> but is that on the hookup bait? I'm sorry. You're casting the hookup bait, huh? California baits. I mean, they're getting them down there. You're not stupid, he's gonna let you go. So we caught three back in this little spot, and we've only hooked up when the motor was running. Could be a coincidence, but each time I turn the motor off. Look at him, Cat Mike. Woo! There you go. Quick release. Good job, brother. Thank you. You crawling it? Were you crawling it? Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> Too in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> we caught some big fish in here, you know. They're, they're oh, here for sure. sure. Craw oh, man. <laughs> I almost got the cast. That's a good sign when you can't get all the lines in. So we're casting these hookup baits. We're casting these things and just crawling them. You know, just like hopping a plastic worm like you know your largemouth bass fishing. It sounded to me like you had enough time to cast, let it sink, and <laughs> I knew move it. I did, exactly what I did. I, yeah. I gave it a little a twitch, pop. Mike, you got to tie one of these things on, man. It's, <laughs> they are a lot of fun. It's pretty crazy, dude. I had three, three fish and three casts, and that was Tommy's first cast. Changes to... Buddy. <laughs> gotta be big some screaming little fish man right, right? <laughs> they hit them hookup baits and uh thank you captain there you go yeah old school catch another one brother <laughs> nice nice wow still all scattered in here very high in the water column but they're also uh, on the bottom as well They always remind me of when you're fishing, right? Coming about the tree stuff, a feel, a stump feel, or something. Mm -hmm. It's real slow, you just feel it. Yep. A lot like with the jigging pig, too, you know, like a, just crawling that thing, just trying to make a. Yep. Like a bunch of. Like a dust trail behind it, kind of. Oh. You got nailed, huh? Okay, let's see how long it takes. I'm gonna hit the bottom. Here we go. Oh, geez, Mike. What you got, Mike? I didn't get to move it. Ooh, oh, belly shot. Oh, no, it's not too bad. Underneath the chin. Is it under, under the chinner? Change it. guy all right a lot of people ask about the when you get when you get hooked on the side like this foul hooked I, I ground a lot of these barbs halfway down I don't like to grind them all the way but about halfway down but what happens is you know this this spoon is fluttering everywhere they have a hard time really honing in on it you know they may hit it you know come up and hit it here you yank and get them in the side and you know they get they get foul hooked uh, quite often especially when they're small Good job, bro. Right there. Prototype. Prototype. <laughs> Got the old, the old copper tape. Yeah. We were uh, we were just talking about the tide, how the tide changed, and when we first came back in here, the tide was still running strong, and we were marking, man, lots of fish, and pretty much grouped up in one big area, and we're about slack tide now. It's been slack for a little while. You can see there, dead high. And we're still marking fish, but they're way spread out now. You can see how spread out they are. You know, they're not all grouped up like they were. You can see this is, you know, 
lots of feet of drifting to mark these where before they were just all peppered all over the screen and when the uh you know when the tide is running and these fish have to kind of work against the current to do whatever they're trying to do they'll group up nice and tight a lot of the times and when they're grouped up tight and we find them fishing in a barrel you know their tide relaxes the water relaxes goes slack now they can kind of roam everywhere they're not in a hurry to get anywhere they're just taking their time and just kind of looking around they spread out we're catching one here one there where we were catching you know one after the other so it usually doesn't mean to move if that happens and you know you're marking a lot of fish it usually just means chill wait for the tide to get rolling again and uh it'll, it'll turn back on you'll see how you'll mark them different again you'll mark them nice and tight versus all spread out Surprised you're able to cast it that thing anywhere with that because it's it's got 50 pound braid on that little reel. There you go. Did it go? Yeah. There we go, right at the boat. Dude, that little tap it's crazy, man. This fish doesn't know he's hooked. Look at a fluke, look at that fluke. Oh my god, look at the size of that horse. <laughs> is it a keeper? Hell yeah, that's a keeper. I don't know if the season is though. No, but uh, yeah. I, I could tell that wasn't no striper, man. Oh, dude. Yeah, you know what, dude? Bring it up. Let's just stay here. I got to bring it up. It's eating. It's definitely a keeper. I don't just know if it's season started. No, it hasn't. It hasn't? Look at this, look at the parasites all over them. Oh yeah, yep. Worms, they're, they're all in them. They in them too? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, throw them there. Do all the flounder, all the fluke have those worms? Yeah, absolutely, the worms inside of it. Yeah. They go through it into the skin. See the purple worms? Yeah. Oh my God. Every fish in this bay, but every fish in this bay don't look like that. <laughs> Let's see, huh? It, right. maybe, maybe there is no dinner here. No. Yeah, you cook the worms, the worms taste like Probably if I pinch the tail, 24 inch fish. You? Somebody else is going to fish. Beautiful fish. Send her back. See you later. That fish didn't even know it was hooked. That was weird. I don't think you knew it was hooked. <laughs> it definitely felt strange, man. <laughs> that was right at the boat, it felt too, like right? A boot. It felt like yeah. a boot. <laughs> Yeah, I felt the tap. The tap was identical to how the striper hit, but then when I set the hook, I was like, it just felt like weight. I've had some fluke that fight pretty good, man. That wasn't one of them. Lucky. Marshmallows! They're after me, Lucky Charms. Oh, I'm going to come back a little bit and rock it sideways into that.